All right, so today we're gonna work on uh, depositing some metal films on our four inch uh, sapphire substrate. So this loud is really noisy because um, our neighbors who we share this lab with just moved in this helium liquefaction system. That's a giant beast and I'm not thrilled with it next to us, but we'll, we'll live with it. It's noisy. It's not like, it's not like our equipment is very um, quiet either. So what we've got over here is a um, soft wall clean room. So you see these got these walls, there's laminar flow at the top that blows air in and down. So it's a little mini clean room where we're gonna be uh, depositing our films. So Maj is gonna lead us through the process of using our um, advanced uh, ultra high vacuum sputter system from AJA to, uh, to deposit some metal film. So Maj, take All it right. away. Well, welcome, let's go in here where it's a bit more quiet. You can hear the fan running um, in the back. This is our AJA uh, sputtering system. It has six sputter guns that you can see in here. Uh, each of these guns have a target on them. Uh, the target has a particular metal or material that you want to be sputtered. Okay, so what we're doing is we're doing sputtering. So sputtering is a process of coating uh, a wafer with uh, a material, usually a metal. So what you do is you start with a metal target and you shoot high energy ions at it. In this case, those high energy ions are argon. Um, the argon ions hit the target and they hit the target so hard that the metal shoots off of it and then flies up and coats the, met, the, um, the wafer that we have suspended above the target. You can think about this as uh, one analogy people like to use is that if you had a, a pool and you put a uh, piece of paper uh, floating above the pool, and you threw a bunch of bowling balls into the pool, that would just splash the water up and, that, and cover the wafer. That's essentially what we're doing here. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Majid who's gonna uh, show us how our system actually works. So today we're going to be depositing beta tantalum. We have a tantalum target uh, on one of these guns um, onto a, uh, um, a cleaned uh, sapphire wafer. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is put on some gloves. This wafer was prepared in our nanofab at UCSB. So I've uh, been able to uh, vacuum seal it. Doesn't last too long. So uh, getting it from uh, this, uh, from the nanofab into the uh, into the vacuum chambers uh, as soon as possible is uh, uh, really advantageous. So what we're going to do right now is turn off the vacuum uh, of the load lock, and this is the loading chamber. So the wafer is going to be loaded into the load lock, uh, where then once we pump this back down, uh, we open this gate valve and then transfer manually the, um, the substrate from the load lock into the main chamber. One plate, so this plate is where we actually load the, uh, the wafer onto. Uh, and then this is a holder. Uh, and on these holder are three prongs. And those prongs are what sit on grooves uh, of this center shaft. Uh, and it's uh, to be held up uh, in the main chamber. Um, so I'll take out this. Um, and we can just load our silicon wafer. Uh, it is important not to talk while your wafer is out. Um, there, uh, uh, obviously because um, you could uh, inadvertently spit on the wafer and that would uh, cause issues in your process. So it's a sapphire wafer. It's polished on one side to an incredibly smooth surface, but the back side is still uh, not polished. It's kind of like a ground glass look, which is why the wafer isn't completely transparent here. Now we're going to vent on the load lock. Uh, we'd like the pressure to drop uh, below uh, E to the negative six tor um, before opening the, the gate valve. 
for the for the main chamber, we have two main um, uh, pumping mechanisms. One is this uh, main turbo pump, uh, which can be seen back here, and the other uh, is a is a cryo pump, and that is uh, uh, shown right here. Um, so this is a huge turbo pump. It's like 12 inches in diameter. Um, it basically is a giant turbine blade that runs um, at something like 50,000 RPM and essentially is a big fan that blows the air out. Um, the cryo pump works on a different principle. It's at about 12 Kelvin and it's got a bunch of surface area that it holds at 12 Kelvin and then all the air basically sticks to it and freezes. So it won't pump out helium but it'll pump out oxygen and nitrogen and all those other materials really well. Um, so the combination of the two gets us cold. The problem is you never get to a good, a really good vacuum like we want, which is we want a vacuum of something like 10 to the minus 10 Tor, which is you know incredibly low for a, a, a vacuum system. Uh, but the problem is you get water that sticks on the walls of all of our chambers and that it slowly outgasses and, and gives you um, and raises your vacuum. So what we're gonna, so what we do is we, we bake this thing out. If we if we ever have to open up the main chamber, we close it back up, and then there's this gray blanket. That gray blanket is actually a silicone heating element that heats the whole chamber up to about 100 degrees Celsius, so about boiling point of water. We pump on it for several days hot, and that uh, is that's what lets us get down to the low vacuums we need. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have six targets in here. Um, and currently the targets, the metal that we have installed are tungsten, niobium, tantalum, uh, platinum, and silicon. Oh, and hafnium. So now that we're uh, uh, low enough in pressure, I'm going to uh, move the wafer from the load lock into the main chamber. So I'm first going to open this gate valve. And then we close these shutters so that when the deposition is happening, we're not coating the inside of the mirror um, or the inside of the window with uh, metal. So now I'm lowering the center shaft so that it gets right under the single prong that I'm looking at. And then I'm going to, underneath it, hook onto, latch, and then raise. So now I'm latched and raising. And what I like to do while this is in there is start spinning so that I know that it's actually hooked. Uh, there has been a case where uh, I, re I removed the arm and then started the spin and the entire thing fell and we had to uh, open up the chamber. So, and then pump out. So it's a real pain in the neck. Out, yeah. We want to avoid that. So now that it's rotating, I see it's latched just fine. I'm going to raise it up further out of the way. Can we see it rotating in there? Yeah. So there you can see it rotating. The reason we rotate it is to make the film more uniform. Sometimes there can be a pattern in the sputter gun. And so by rotating the wafer, we smooth out those um, radial uh, dependencies and get a smoother film because we having a uniform film is one of the most important things uh, that we can get for our devices. Today we're going to be depositing beta tantalum, which is a particular allotrope of tantalum uh, that has a lower superconducting transition temperature. Um, and we have, uh, so how the, the process works is you have layers and then processes which are uh, a group of layers, um, uh, and then you can uh, run your process. For, for us, um, first thing that needs to happen is you need to turn off the cryo valve. Um, and then uh, in the log, I've deposited beta tantalum in the past, so the recipe so we're going to be depositing uh, uh, beta tantalum uh, at uh, room temperature uh, using 250 watts. Uh, we're, we're going to be 
flowing in argon um, and trying to keep the pressure during the deposition at one millitor. Uh, and this is going to be a 30 minute deposition. All right, so now that the recipe is loaded, we are going to start it. The shutter's working. The shutter can turn on. Argon was flowing at 30. We have much uh, lower volts. Is the plasma still on? It looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it. Did the plasma go out? All right, so and the shutter opens and the plasma goes out. Yeah. Okay. So time to debug. I'm gonna. Yeah. Everyone, as you can tell, I've changed. Uh, today's a new day. It's actually a new week. Um, we had to cut the video short last time because unfortunately the sputter system a plasma was not stable. The plasma um, went out last time, and also a fuse broke on the uh, center stage that holds the. Um, that holds the wafer. And so we had to replace a fuse uh, and open up the system. But we're back working now. Um, and uh, we have a wafer in the system right now. You can see that it's uh, a deposition is going on. We see that we have a, uh, a beta, ta uh, beta tantalums being deposited onto our wafer currently. Um, however, the, the wafer is probably um, a dud now that it was sitting out while I had to open up the uh, chamber and look at the target. So what we're going to do right now on this test wafer is uh, abort the process and unload it. Um, and so we can look here. Uh, it's nice. It's just a big red abort button. And I can show you then how to unload. So the plasma went out. We can see um, the chamber is good getting back up to uh, or back down in pressure. So what we can do is open up the turbo valve, which is back there to uh, have all that argon that was flowing uh, be released from the chamber. And we're also going to open the cryo valve. So now as a uh, uh, base pressure is dropping, we can also turn on the sensor here and we can see how low we get uh, in pressure. You want to see the rotate, uh, the wafer rotating with the light on? So that's going 20 RPM pretty fast in order to get us uh, a really uniform film. And so I'm going to slow down the rotation. What you can see is there are prongs on this side. This holder right here has two prongs that are holding uh, the, the wafer onto the, uh, onto the center stage. And the other one has one. So I'm gonna position one of them, then uh, uh, raise it up just a little bit. So that way this arm doesn't run into the center stage. Uh, we can now open the load block valve and uh, push the arm in. So now that this uh, transfer arm is centered, I'm going to lower the center stage. So now that I'm unlatched from the wafer carrier, I'm lifting the center stage up so that uh, way I can clear enough room to retract the transfer arm. Now that I've cleared enough room, I'm going to pull this back out and we can see the carrier and wafer is here. So now we can close this and see the film that we've deposited. So 
uh, the pressure in the chamber can uh, I've seen can uh, fall to around like eight e to the negative ten tor. So this is pretty high. Uh, unfortunately, when you open up the chamber, it takes time for the base pressure to drop. And currently, we are venting the the load lock chamber. So so now that we've vented our load lock, uh, we can uh, unmount the wafer and look look at the uh, film that we've deposited. Oh man. So this is a little tricky. You have this inner plate and then this outer ring. So what I like to do is come here and just poke up a bit the inner ring. And then I'll grab it. And I'll hold it by its edges. And pull out. And voila. And so Sapphire is a clear wafer. It's fairly transparent. And right now we see beta tantalum covered on, on this film. Maybe you can see that too, where the pins are held it was covering the wafer so the beta tantalum didn't have time to grow. So you see four marks around the wafer where the holder was. Awesome. Yeah, so this is our uh, magnetron sputtering system. We use it to deposit our uh, MKID metals. Uh, today we deposited beta tantalum. Uh, which is used as this high um, inductance material. Thank you for watching us today and make sure to like and subscribe.